Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a black horse. This is kind of a complementary painting to our white horses that we did a uh, like couple months ago. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to chat for our live show today. So if you've got questions, you can ask those and I will try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using an extra large canvas today because we used a 16 by 20 for our um, first version of these horses, the white horses. I'll show you that painting really quick. Um, so I decided to do a black one to kind of go along with the same theme of that black and white theme. Um, and uh, I have pre prepped my canvas. I'm using a 16 by 20 Frederick's Blue Label uh, Ultra Smooth Canvas, so it'll make it really nice for our blending, um, really easy to do. And I've coated it with a coat of titanium white. Uh, I always coat my canvases um, with paint um, when they're, even if I'm gonna leave the background white, I always um, cover up that gesso. Um, I've got a few brushes that I'm going to use. Of course, I used a large flat for the background white, but then for the horse itself, we're gonna use a number eight bright, a number six filbert, a number four filbert, and a number two round. And then I've got my trusty angle brushes here, my quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brushes. And then for the hair, we're going to need a granier or comb or some sort of rake brush uh, that's got uh, some separation in the bristles. You could probably use a fan brush too. Um, just whatever you've got that uh, would work for these hairs. Um, you could also use a um, liner brush if you need to. So you could just put them in individually. It'll take a little longer, but it'll still work. And then I've got a number one round for some of the details like around the eye and things like that. So uh, thank you to Princeton. They're our brush sponsor and Fredericks, our canvas sponsor for providing our materials today. For sure. We really appreciate it. Um, all right, let me go over our colors really quick. Very simple palette today. Uh, we've got, uh-oh, we lost signal. Do I not have my, uh-oh, let me turn it on here. I guess that would help. Uh, <laughs> 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 voila! <laughs> uh, move it over a little, got bumped. All right. We're using white, yellow, pink, blue, green. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, wrong palette. The wrong palette. Uh, titanium white, unbleached titanium, uh, ultramarine blue, burnt, umber and carbon black and then I've got some zinc white as well and this is just glazing liquid probably not going to use a whole lot of glazing liquid today just because we're um, going to kind of have that painterly look to it so we're not going to have to have super smooth blends all right so after I sketched my pre-sketched my horse on here I realized that I made his head really small compared to the size of these horse heads um, they're quite large and they fill up quite a large amount oh, of area. So I think I'm going to make this a little bit larger um, when I show you how to draw it. And let's just fingers crossed that this is not going to take us a whole lot of time because <laughs> I've been sketching for about 30 minutes before the show. So <laughs> well, <you laughs> to get it just <laughs> and and I realized at the like last minute as I that I was working on a uh <laughs> a uh, 12 by 16 instead of a 16 by 20 canvas. So I sketched it on here and then... Uh, and then she went and got the other painting. And got the other like painting. A, like uh -oh. We had like 20 minutes before the show. And so I was like hurrying up and trying to sketch this thing on here and then realized it's too small still. All right, so let's make it bigger. So um, on the other horse painting, I noticed that the ear up here comes almost all the way to the top of the canvas there. Of course, we don't want it right up against the canvas edge because if you did frame it, you would want at least a quarter inch, uh, you know, around it. So I am going to bring that ear up and that will kind of give me a starting point. I'm going to have to move the head this way a little bit, though, because if I move that ear up and make him big, then the nose maybe, well, it's probably going to be okay. We still have quite a bit of room around here. So I think I'm just going to go right above it right here, and we're just going to do this kind of banana shape for the ear. Now, when I was sketching mine first, what I did is, what I usually do is kind of try to figure out my boundaries, and that way it helps me kind of fit everything in perspective. So our... Um, edge of our canvas here, our horse is going to be coming off right here and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit. I'm gonna kind of enlarge everything about an inch or a, or a half inch. So, yeah, that looks about right. 
I'm going to do this outer curve. So the top of the head here, it's going to make a long curving line. And then it's going to kind of gradually go off the canvas there. Okay, are you able to see this? I'm, go I'm going a little bit light at first, yeah. Yeah. just because I want to be able to make sure that I have room for all the rest. So I'm going to come around the forehead, and then it kind of flattens out right here. Let's go ahead and do the other side of the ear. So it kind of does this shape like that. Let me erase what I did before, because we're moving everything. And in case you didn't mention, which pencil are you using? This is a Scryball, black Scryball pencil. Yes. It's a little bit softer than the um, Aquarell pencils, but I... And it's water-soluble? Well, water-soluble. You can see where I'm hitting it with water okay. here, with the wet towel it's erasing. Well, sort of erasing, smudging right now. There we go. All right, so. So then the forehead here, where, where we kind of do the eye socket, it's going to come down just a little bit from here. The ear, if you go kind of just almost straight down at a slight angle, the, uh, the eye is going to set kind of right in between this ear. So this is a really key um, key thing to get right. It's going to be on the far end of the forehead. If you split this head in half here, the eye is going to kind of be right in the middle right here. So if you did a big oval like right here for where you're going to put the head, your eye is going to be just right in there, just maybe just above that line I'm seeing. I might have it a little bit low on mine. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to move the eye up because I moved the ear up, so. Everything's getting moved. Let's just go erase these lines. All right, so now we've got kind of our starting point here. The forehead slopes down pretty start sharply. And then we've got this eye socket that kind of sticks out. And then it comes back down at an angle in. And then if you were to kind of follow this line down, it kind of eventually joins back up with this line here. It goes in, dips in, comes back out just a little bit. It's very subtle. Like that. And then... We're going to bring our nose out to here. So I need to make everything a little bit bigger. I'm kind of still staying in about the same spot. I need to expand. Bring everything out. All right, then our mouth can come down here. This will be much, I think, much better much closer to the same size as the other canvas horses. Plus we've got all this space, why not use it, right? Exactly. <laughs> all right, I feel like I'm getting a little bit big on this, but we'll see. Okay, so the mouth does this sort of flat edge straight here in, and it curves around, and then the lip kind of curves around here, and then does another little flat edge right here, and then it curves in and back out. And I think I'm making it a little small, so let me make it a little bit bigger. Trying to All 
I'm going to go ahead and put in the, the chest here. Bring it up right here. Like that. And then this is a large... All the neck folds kind of follow this angle here. It's going to come up and around and end right at this ear here. So this ear is going to come out and leave a little space in between here. And come up like that, curve back around, and then we're seeing kind of the inside of it makes this teardrop shape right there. And it's a little bit lower than this one, so they're almost the same height, so you can bring this one up just a little bit, but this one is just slightly higher than the other one. Okay. And this line kind of comes down from this cheek area here, this muscle, the jaw, and then the face is going to come out angle like that towards the nose. And then it does this little box shape around the lip. Okay, so that's about right, I think. So this nose box here, this little part that we stuck out right here, if you did a line like a cross at an angle, then this nostril is going to come up right about the same height as this part right here. So it's going to come around like this and fill in this area. And then there's another part that kind of cuts off and does this like this. All right, then there's some muscles that come up this way. I feel like this needs to come down just a little bit more. Uh, maybe not. There's a little part that comes out like that. There's this should make a V sec section right here if you did it right. And then there's this little detail that comes out here. If you kind of continue that line up, then that will nestle in the eye. This line here is going to equal this line here between the eyes. So just make sure you've got that angle right. And then this eye is going to be right in here. The top of it kind of goes a line. And then it goes another straight line in. And then the bottom of it's rounded back up into that area. And this line kind of goes along the back side of it if you did it fit in the right area. This is a little bit curved this way. On top, he looks angry. If you did it straight, <laughs> all the way straight, you don't want it, him to look angry. Uh, or maybe you do. If you want him to look really fierce, you can leave that straight. Uh, okay. Let me see. I'm looking at it. Just making sure I've got these. I feel like I got his nose a little bit long. So let me expand him out a little bit yeah, yeah. so this needs to come down a little bit That's what I was thinking So let me take out some of these lines and see what it looks like without some of these lines in there. See if we're happy with it. I don't want to start painting this black paint on this white canvas until I know I've got my sketch right. Because then we can really kind of mess this up. We don't have to paint over the top of black. It will be a lot harder to do that than to correct it now. So... using a white claw 
cloth here. <sighs> yeah, let's just make this whole. Sorry guys. I literally noticed that this was too small like two seconds before we went on air. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I'm gonna have to draw this again. <laughs> I don't like drawing on air because I always like feel like I'm rushed. I don't want to take you know as much time as I do when don't, I'm just like not ru you know not rushed, rushed for time. Everybody enjoys okay seeing the process. It's helping okay. them also learn All what right. to look for and to see. And it's okay not to get it perfect the first time and go that's back. That's true. Yeah. Oh no, it's never going to be perfect the first time. That's for sure. Well, unless I'm doing it. <laughs> unless you're doing it. Okay. Oh gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> so welcome guys. Hope you are having a good Saturday. We uh we are enjoying our weekend here. Looking forward to Father's Day tomorrow here in the US. Got our son Nathan coming in. Okay, I'm just going to re... I was trying to kind of keep an eye on the other drawing, but I think that was messing me up because I think I was trying to keep it in perspective with the other drawing, and it just doesn't need to be that. Okay, so that, this ear, I see the problem right here. This ear, if I come straight down, I need my eye to be kind of in front of that that ear a little bit. I think I'm going to move that eye up just a little bit. My pencil doesn't want to stick to the canvas anymore. I've been drawing on it so much. It's getting slick. Okay, so there, that should be this line here. So I'll bring that forward there. There we go. And then this line, I'm going to bring it back just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. And then this triangle shape right here. to the mouth. This is probably going to end up exactly the way it, it was before, but I'll just feel better for having to, done it a second time. <laughs> okay, so eye socket, making sure that I'm lining those up. Sorry, hon, you're like, is she going to paint on this at all, ever, today? <laughs> I ate. I promise, I will I will be and painting soon. I had my espresso, so I'm doing good. I'm just trying to get this right. No rush over here for me. I don't want it to look weird when we're done. shorten this whole muzzle just slightly 
and I am going to have to paint over that white. Right there. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. What are you sighing about there, hon? I'm just being silly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very subtle, but it's like maybe a quarter inch smaller right there. I think I'm gonna like it better. Okay. Let's start painting on it. We'll see what happens. I'm going to start with the number eight, what, number eight flat here, bright. Okay, so that, oh, we'll just start painting on it, see what happens. See what happens, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can usually see better, it's weird, I, I see my corrections more when I'm paint, when I, on, with paint, than I do with a pencil. So, um, I'll, as soon as we start painting, I'll probably be able to tell if there's any other corrections I need to make. I'm already going to have to repaint some of this with white, so it's not going to really matter. All right, grabbing carbon black here. I'm just going to start blocking in some of this, and I'm going to go along with the lines of the neck here. I'm really looking forward to doing the hair. This hair on horses is really fun to do. I really love it. It's very, like, kind of free-flowing... It's just uh, something very relaxing about it. So I like painting horses in general. It's really fun. All right. So we're going to, you know, of course, this is going to be black, all black, right? So it's just going to be a matter of um, finding our values, finding where we can add lighter values to create some form on here. Grab some unbleached titanium. Start adding some lighter areas, some sheen on his coat down here. And I'm letting my brush strokes be kind of choppy and expressionist, kind of expressive. So this one is very much kind of where you can kind of do that. You can see on this one how we did that. We kind of left our brush strokes showing and just didn't really over blend it. So I think that, I think we got our, our face size um, closer to where we want it though, for sure. So I'm happy with the enlarging that we did. There. Trying to get some side shots there. It's like super blurry. Really? Hmm. It almost looks like somebody licked the, the lens. <laughs> really? Huh. Well, I do that every now and then, but it's never really bothered it before, so <laughs> let's see why I would have this time. <clears throat> <laughs> and if you're painting this on a gallery wrapped canvas, you probably want to go ahead and, you know, put your black along the sides, around the sides too while you're at it, but I usually do it during the shows because it just takes a little extra time. Okay, so there's this highlight that comes up along the neck right here. And then let's go ahead and mix some of the ultramarine blue and burnt umber together so we have a little bit of a uh, warmer gray in a few places the they actually neutralize each other really well the warm color in the brown neutralizes the cool color of the blue 
so it creates one of the best just completely neutral grays that I, you can find and depending on if you add a little bit more gray or a little bit more blue uh, or a little bit more brown or a little bit more blue it'll give you a different tone to your gray you know so you can get a little bit cooler gray by adding a little bit more blue and you can get a little bit uh, darker or warmer gray by adding more of the brown all right so let's do like this I think part of it is that I had that too low so I'm going to go ahead and bring that up a little bit right there let's grab some of that black this area right here is from one of our darkest areas on our canvas I can it's fine or do you need it no, for well, it's fine I get to come up here by you okay that's all that matters it's a little bit distracting our triangular shape that kind of forms that jaw line or the under the side of the chin and the comes down into the mouth and then as we get to these smaller areas I'm probably gonna have to switch to a smaller brush but we'll try to block in as much as I can with these larger brushes it just saves time okay we got a color question okay they would like to know if they could use Payne's gray with a touch of white mix in yeah it'll look more blue Payne's gray is a blue gray so it'll be more of a blue color but it'd be lovely I think and if you want it more warm you can add burnt umber to it and Payne's gray is just ultramarine blue plus black so it's basically what we're using so yeah I mean it It'll just save you from having to mix that blue with our black. All right. Get some more gray here. The face shading on the face is a little bit more subtle. So I'm really kind of doing wet into wet here, blending. I'm not doing a lot of waiting for it to dry or anything like that. I'm kind of doing, trying to get the colors just about right when I first put them on so they kind of look more painterly. And we'll add more layers obviously on top, but just trying to get these first layers as close to the right values as we want. So that under the eye is gonna be really dark black. And then around the ear. Here, the top of the head. And then our forehead is quite a lot lighter. This whole side of the face, the sun's up, obviously coming from this direction. So this face is all a lot lighter than the, this area. See, I think right in there we can correct that right there. Just taking water and going over that edge with this other brush here that's clean. Lifting off some of that paint right there.
And I'm going to grab that white and just go in nice and thick. If you go in really thick, you can move things around with the titanium white. I can adjust my border here. And it'll actually soften up that edge just a little bit if we do kind of blend out the edge with our white a little bit. It'll soften it, smudge that edge a little bit. It's kind of blending somewhat with our black. So we've got a little bit softer edge on our horse face here. There we go. What is the deal, honey? You're just There's moving a, around. The light is flashing. Where? On my camera? No, back behind here. Where the LED lights. I don't want it to explode. Okay. All right, I think we're getting closer to the shape we're looking for there. Let's get some more of that white. I'm gonna clean up this edge on the nose down here that had a little bit of that sketchy showing up. And then like right in here. Very good. Let's do the ear. So the ear is quite dark. Let's go ahead and... And I've switched to the number six filbert. Can you just turn it off? Just turn it off. Which one is it? It stopped doing it. Okay. It's really distracting. <laughs> Having you fumbling around behind me there, hon. studio. <laughs> I she, almost hear them in the background. Like, she's sleeping. Huh? She's sleeping. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. Usually they're climbing into the boxes and climbing over stuff and I can hear things moving around. It's what it reminds me of with you back there messing with stuff. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. That's pretty, pretty good. Thanks. Pretty impressive there. I'm practicing. <laughs> Close. All right, I think I got the structure worked out a little bit better. Now I think I can bring this around, round this out just a little bit more. This definitely kind of does this curve there. It's not quite that pronounced. There we go. And I think I brought it down too low. Is 
So somebody's asked if mm -hmm. they wanted to do the background different than just white. Yeah. What would be some good? Oh, you could do any number of colors, really. My first reaction is always like Pepto pink. <laughs> just like, boom. <laughs> Gets your attention. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Are you saying that my taste in art is questionable? I'm saying, yeah, the ear. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything. Actually, the, the, just gonna ignore the it. artist does not endorse. No commentary by the light guy. <laughs> Studio kitten, <laughs> start calling you that. <laughs> it's flashing again. I'm gonna go turn it off. Do it. Okay. So really this first layer, I'm just trying to kind of block in our main colors, try to get my forms right, you know, get this, this because this shadow does this S right here, right there, it's pretty high up on the nose, it's not too far away from the edge there, so let's go ahead and do it, fill in that whole area right there, and then there's a lighter area goes around it and fills in behind it right there and then front a little bit you, yeah somebody let, oh, go ahead no, go ahead oh somebody suggested that you could do the background like the tank yeah yeah that would be cool yeah, like a really blendy kind of interesting. We got so many weird comments on that tank video. <laughs> My gosh, we had some German guy that got really mad about it. And he was talking about panzers and something. We had to look it up. It was something about the fire. And, and I don't know. He was mad. It was not good. Uh, the tank in the sea of fire. Yeah, it, he was really offended by it. A lot of people were like, war? Really? And, you know, <laughs> like, it's a tank. Calm down, folks. It happens. It's a real thing. I'm not endorsing any political statements. Mark just plays the game. <laughs> That's all it is. I am not. Say it again. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just funny. Yeah. I just like, wow. I never realized how controversial it would be to paint a flipping tank <laughs> like seriously yeah. so funny it's an anniversary present for my honey yeah baby it was It's behind us now. It's setting <laughs> it's setting record for the most dislikes. <laughs> it's setting records for the least viewed video well, ever. <laughs> least views, most dislikes. <laughs> Thank you, honey, for suggesting that. That's um, I d I did not suggest it. <laughs> I told you not to do it, but you insisted on doing it. Uh, yeah, I did. I know, did. So. <laughs> I had no idea the can of worms we were opening up there. So I'm going to get a, a graphic and like midway through most of your paintings, I'm just going to flash it on their tank. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nobody expects a Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> oh my gosh. So funny. Oh. With so many things to be angry about in the world, why would you bother about a so, painting of a tank. So what I'm hearing you say is that you'll probably never paint a tank for me ever again. Probably. Hmm. Probably not on air, that's for Th sure. Thanks, world. I'll do it on uh, privately. Mm -hmm. So funny. 
It's like the ballerinas. I got a lot of guff over the ballerinas too. When I said they don't eat, I got so many mean comments about that. It was a joke. <laughs> I'll be so careful what I say. <laughs> Well, for those who have been following you and been with us, all the unusual suspects over oh, the last four or five on. years, yeah. they understand, they know. Well, they were super supportive. Yeah, everybody yeah. was loving it. The, the casual person that pops in once in a while and says, that's oh, that's true. cool. You yeah, know, they they've never seen our show before, yeah. and so they're like, why are you painting? They don't know us. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I've been talking way too much. Yeah, come back. I don't want you to take me out. <laughs> to do away with you. Do away with me. All right, so the key areas to highlight here on here, I've been talking and not telling you what I'm doing here, as usual. Um, <laughs> let me clean my brush out so it doesn't drown there. All right, so we're going to highlight right above the bone of the eye right here. That'll pull that forward for us. So we're going to have our highlight coming up here. We're going to highlight this cheekbone right here and this part here because it kind of curves down be behind it. And then we're going to highlight along this part of the nose and like right up in here, right? And then there is more highlights um, along the body in here that we'll be doing too. So I think, I'm looking at it, I think... We're pretty good on it. I feel like I, I don't know, there's still something about this whole thing over here that I'm not 100% about, it, but I don't really know what it is yet, so I'm just going to keep painting and hope that it resolves itself. You know, sometimes, well, you know, the thing about painting live like this is that, you know, I don't, I don't do these ahead of time because I was having issues with tendonitis, so we just paint it live on the go, and... That's not the norm. <laughs> like, normally an artist is not going to sit down and finish a painting in one setting. That's just very rare. Um, I never, hardly ever did that when I was just a studio art artist and wasn't teaching, you know. Um, so this this process is already kind of unnatural in a way, you know, to uh, have to expect it to be just right, you know, in one try. But, um, you know, generally, if I if I had an issue like this, what I would probably do at this point is stop and um, set it up in my living room somewhere before I got too much farther and just kind of looked at it for a few days. And then um, looked at the comparison photo, you know, kept it where I could see both of them and just kind of compared back and forth. And then usually within a few days or, you know, even sometimes the same day, I'll be able to figure out what it is that I wanted to change or, you know, what it is that feels off to me and then go back in and, you know, make small adjustments. So um, I don't have that, uh, that luxury with these live shows. Although... I think it's good that you can see, like Mark said, you can see kind of the process. It's definitely not a, you know, like, I'm not going to start a painting and say, that. well, unless I've painted it before and I'm really comfortable with the subject and I, you know, kind of know where it's going to go and what colors I'm going to use. This one actually makes it fairly easy because it's black and white, so I don't have to really worry too much about the colors. I'm only concerning myself with the values, getting these values right, adding this little bit of lighter color and I'm going back and forth adding just a little bit of glazing liquid as I want to blend these in but I, I am not fully blending them I'm just kind of doing them so that they're kind of uh, breaking up doing these short choppy brush strokes so that they break up and then I notice that there's some areas in here that that black didn't cover the first time around so I'm just coming back through in the opposite direction and um, if you have just a, like these little dots, what you can do is just add a little bit of extra water or some glazing liquid to your black or your paint and then go over and it'll seep down into those holes. So, you know, when you paint on your canvas, usually you'll have you know, these little black dots or little white dots where the paint hasn't fully penetrated down into it. Some canvases are better than others. This speaking of super smooth canvas is not having a lot of those areas because um, it's so smooth it's it's already kind of covered pretty well.
but um, there are a lot of canvases, especially the high tech, highly textured canvases where you're going to have those little white dots to fight and uh, using a thin down paint will make it super easy. And then you don't have to cover the whole area. All you have to do is to kind of just do a wash of that color back over the top and, um, and it'll seep down in and fill in those cracks, fill in those empty spaces, little white spots. All right, I'm liking it so far. I think we're getting close to the right values here. Um, you know, even though it's black horse, we're going to have areas that are almost white. So I'm going to use a little bit of warmer gray, like the ultra, the unbleached titanium will make it a little bit warmer. Um, that'll kind of tone it down a little bit too, make it look a little bit more gray and rather than white. So you can kind of use that as a help if you feel like it's just like too much, um, too much white. Just trying to kind of do some medium gray right in here under the eye. And then there's kind of an area of, of a darker gray right here, gray black. Right here. Following the curve of that head with this line. And then right in here, there's a really dark little part of the eye that comes around. Right here. Comes all the way down from the forehead right here. Here and here, there's kind of two. It makes this V-shape right there. And it's kind of irregular. It's not smooth. It's got some bumpiness. And that smooths out around the eye socket here. It kind of goes from that lighter color to the darker. So I can blend right here a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to... There's kind of a outline right there. There's going to be a lid here, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of bring that dark up just a little bit more so that I have a lid there when I add my lighter lid. There should be dark underneath it so the eye looks a little bit big right now. Okay, a little bit darker right here. So light, medium, light. And then this is darker. And then this kind of medium light color kind of goes all the way to the edge. I'm going to get the medium light gray here. Go all the way to the edge with it. Fill in this area. Leave a little bit of that dark area right there. Just kind of going back over and blending in those areas a little bit. Again, not super smooth. I don't want to lose all that kind of brush strokes, but I do want a little bit more transition between the colors, just a little bit more smoothness. And I find it that if I kind of walk the color back and forth, I can get kind of a, some of those brush strokes to show, but still kind of feather out into the next color.
So that right there should make that V shape right there. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more and move that V up just slightly. And then that really strong vein that goes along the from the eye down the face too, so we want to put that in eventually. So this area's got a little bit lighter. This cheekbone down here is super dark. That whole area, really dark. So I'm not going to really adjust any of that. Keep that dark. I feel like, I don't know what it is about this. This curve is just wrong. Maybe too low, I don't know. I feel like I'm keep bringing it down lower and lower and it's maybe not supposed to be that low. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It just looks a little off to me, you know? It's like, I don't know. Okay, I'll get over it. <coughs> you know what they say? What? Horses are like snowflakes. No two are like. Exactly. <laughs> it's a pretty common saying. <laughs> I don't think that's a saying, honey. I'm pretty sure that's not a saying. Out on the out on the farm in the in the range it is. <laughs> Maybe not for you city folk. Okay. Man, that's like two for today. What? Two, two no comments. Did I get? Did I already say no comment earlier? Yeah, earlier about something, something awesome and witty. I said also that I can't remember right now. <laughs> well, it'd be nicer to you since it's Father's Day coming up. <laughs> Your birthday week. Did your sunshade work? So, the first day I had it, I left it at the house and right. it was sunny out. Right. Second day I had it, I left it at the house and it was sunny. Mm -hmm. So, I got it in the car yesterday. Right. And it was cloudy. So, you didn't need it. So, I didn't need it now. So. Okay. So, I think it's a, a sun away. You know, I put mean? it in there and the sun won't come out. Oh, well, that, it's, there we uh, go. It's almost like insect repellent. Hey. So it's cloudy outside because it's still in my car, so I probably need to go take it out of my car so it'll be sunny out. <laughs> Make this a little bigger here. You're silly. Oh, uh, yeah, somebody reminded me it's the my choice of the background color. Oh. Uh, that got the first no comment. Check. I remember that now. I remember well. <laughs> you know, this, this They're is... They're remembering your insults for you, honey. Uh, yes, they, so... Every time I'm mean to you. So we're going to have to live stream our life probably here in about five or ten years so everybody can remind us what we said. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to get worse. From... <laughs> I can't remember what you said two minutes ago. Yes, yeah, because it's not getting, getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> So I I think part of it was that I had this little nostril down too low. So I'm going to I'm going to correct that and I'm going to bring that nostril up a little bit. Right here. I made this nostril bigger cuz it actually spans this whole area here, like this part right here. If you did a diagonal line, the top of this nostril should come all the way up to that point. So it's actually quite large right there. I think that's been part of the problem. I just didn't make that nos nose. The nose wasn't big enough for the rest of the face. So now we can make that little notch that's right there coming around. And then this is going to come around like that. 
And then of course across right here is where this part sticks out right there. So that little part right there needs to be covered up with white paint. I think this is the part that was bugging me. Yeah, I think so. Sorry guys, the traceable will be available after this. So you won't have any of these issues if you don't have to draw it. Uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, wish I had had one. I wish I'd drawn it on paper and then I could have, you know, uh, enlarged it. So uh, what I think that you're you got going on here is that you're struggling between the picture and then also you're doing it so that it also matches some of the other horses that you painted too. Right, yeah, just making so. sure, yeah. It, I had the drawing really done really well, but it was just a little small, so I wanted it bigger, and so that's why I was adjusting it on the fly here. But I usually like to have at least uh, an hour or so to, to draw. You can t the ladies in my, in my um, art-taking flight group can tell you I'm not a fast drawer. Because I usually, the first the first week of our bonus video, whatever we do in there, um, we do a project all month long. And uh, I work on it every Thursday with them in that group. And usually the first week, I spend an hour on just like painting out the background. So whatever solid color or whatever kind of pattern we're doing on the background, and then I draw. And that whatever it is we're going to be doing. And that takes me over, you know, usually an hour to do, at least sometimes more. So um, I don't like to take that long when we're doing the live paintings, though. I like to be a little bit faster because I like to just get to the drawing, to the painting part. And if I've drawn it out ahead of time, then I can just kind of explain how I did it really quickly. And then you'll have the tra traceable if you want it. So you don't have to draw it yourself at all, but... Today, I noticed too late that I was a little small, so we ended up having to do it. I think that's way better. You can see how where how much farther down that nose thing was there. Um, it's going to take a couple coats to cover it, though. It's not covering right now. What are you doing when you're laughing at? Nose thing. Nostril. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That's my left brain talking to you right now. Or right brain, I should say. It's not, it doesn't know the words like the left brain does. Yeah, you said nose box earlier. Mm hmm. Yeah. And now, nose thing that goes with the armholes. Right. AKA sleeves. Yeah. My right brain has got it going on when it comes to words. It knows what's. It's very descriptive. Term, terminology. You know exactly what it is for. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the bright, how the right brain stores it too. Probably mm -hmm. you're probably seeing exactly how my right brain uh, stores the words. Somebody from another country is like sleeve. What what does that do? <laughs> but your description of armhole. Well, okay, I know exactly what that is. <laughs> All right, put my, don't make me laugh, I can't draw a straight line. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put in my white stripes on the horse now. Just going to start getting those in. Going to just choppy, choppy line here. Just going to tag them much happier with it overall now. I think, now this makes more sense to me too. I think that it was just kind of throwing the whole thing off a little bit. I may even exaggerate it and bring it out a little bit more once this dries. I'm just going to let it set for now though. But yeah, here's this blaze between the eyes here. Coming down a little bit. I probably made it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Why not? And then we're gonna grab some of that kind of darker medium gray here. Blend it in just a little bit right there. I like it. I'm liking, I think we're getting close to the right tone in the face, the right values. 
getting very close. I'm going to go ahead and pump that up just a little bit. So somebody has asked, is it better to use heavy body or more standard acrylics for this? Um, I feel like heavy body are easier to do these kind of uh, brush strokey kind of paintings myself. You know, anytime you're kind of doing any kind of blending, I feel like heavy body are just a little bit easier to use. If you're doing lines or fine um, details, the thinner paints work better, you know, because they're just easier to... Um, to thin, you know, if you have, if you need, well, like when we do the main up here, we're going to definitely use the, the, um, what happened in that? It's got something all over it. Um, carbon black in the, um, fluid acrylics. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of that out actually, because we're getting close to where we're going to need it. Oh, all right. I actually think I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush for this part of the horse. I didn't have it out earlier, but I think I need it for some of that. So just kind of tapping between these two here to kind of adjust the... There's a little bit of the lighter, lighter gray. You can see how I'm kind of laying this out on my palette too, going light to dark in my, I'm doing that deliberately. So I have my lighter gray over here by my white, so it's easy to just grab a little bit more if I need to. Okay. Good. Now that we're getting to the top layers, I'm going to add a little bit more glazing liquid to it to make my blends a little bit easier to control. Just kind of gives me a little bit more time to work the paint and I can have a thinner layer so that it, it's a little bit more subtle. Um, subtle color overlay. All of this is going to be covered up by hair pretty much, so, but I do want a little bit of this lighter detail in here so that I've got some lighter underneath my hair so that it'll have a little contrast there to work against. So I've got a little bit of the kind of medium gray here coming up in this area. And then over the eye, we've got Light, lighter color that we're going to be putting in here in a minute. How long have we been going so far? An hour? Well, that's not too bad. Is that right? Three? We've been going an hour? Oh, we did. Okay. We did all right. I thought I went a lot longer on that drawing than I did. All right. I was thinking we were super slow. We're doing all right. So definitely need to bump up the color around the nostril here. That needs a lot higher highlighter highlighted. And if you look at this compared to our reference photo, you can see how this is still not quite bright enough. Like this whole part of the face right in here still needs a little bit brighter. And then this over here needs some sheen. So I'm going to take the zinc white and use that over here over the top of this dark area. I'm going to take out most of that. The zinc white will add that sheen without really adjusting the um, value, value too much. It'll kind of just add that kind of hint of lighter shine. Hopefully this all goes well. And then I'm going to grab the darker color. 
and come back up over it while that's wet. Just kind of blend those two together. Add some darker areas and make sure that I'm following those kind of lines of the body so that it makes sense. I cannot see it all where I'm painting because this is so shiny. There we go. I need to tilt it up here. I'm trying to break up this line so it's not like just a bunch of lines coming straight down because there are like little patches of muscle that are going in different directions so this is kind of coming down this way <clears throat> and then this kind of breaks off and kind of has this little highlight comes there and then the neck Um, well, actually, the hair's not going to come down this way. It's going to go up that way. So, And honestly, this you can see how this brush is kind of breaking up. So if you wanted to do the hair, if you don't have a rake brush, if you wanted to, you could use this brush if you have really wet paint and dry out your brush enough so that it's splitting like that. You can see how it's splitting up like that and then have this fluid paint that you're using with it. Just make sure, like if you tap, sometimes it'll kind of split those bristles too, but my brush is fairly dry and I can get those kind of thin lines with, with this brush that break up, you know. So I could, if, if you needed to, you could do your hair on the horse with this brush and do a fairly good job of it. You know, it's not going to look exactly the same, but it will have that kind of element of breaking up and wisp wispiness. And I may end up using this, honestly. I don't know. Um, so, we'll see. But I noticed it was doing that on here, and I was like, well, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea to just do it on the horse itself. Now I'm looking at this shape. This needs to come out a little bit more here. So I think the neck is just a little bit narrow. Maybe, maybe that I'm seeing the hair, but I think I'm going to bring it out just a smidge. So while you smidge it, okay. some person named Mona, hey Mona wants to know, do you have a favorite animal to paint? I want to see if it's um, the same that I said. I like painting birds. And um, but if you don't consider that an animal, well, I like painting b butterflies, which are an insect too. So that doesn't count. Um, animal. <sighs> I mean, yeah, honestly, horses are the first animals that I have that I ever painted. So I did a horse that for um, when we came back from France was one of the very first paintings of an animal that I did and it was a carousel horse not a carousel horse a, a fountain horse it was like a statue it was green and uh, I did two I did two in that series two paintings I really liked them they were like a teal blue very you know it was like um, they had weathered to a teal blue and I just really liked the colors and stuff in them so I don't know. What did what animal did you guess, Sonny? Are I you said, wrong? I said liger. <clears throat> Never tried. 
tried that one. How could that be my favorite if I've never painted it, honey? Hey, I tried. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to make this vein here. I'm th going to thin this out so that it's kind of transparent black gray here. I'm not going to go too dark too fast. I'm just going to... It uh, comes out from the eye and then down and around this area here and back up. What were we going to say? I just figured you and Napoleon had that in common. <laughs> the liger. Yeah, thanks. Makes sense now that you say it. I can see why you would think that. We had to make some connections there for you, but we got there. Okay. <laughs> it's been too long since I've watched that movie. Well, maybe that's what I want to do for Father's Day then. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so going back under here, adding the darker black right around the eye here. I suck it. Okay, and then we're going to use that. Grab a little bit of the warmer white and go just above. It's too prominent, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. And I'm trying to, I don't want to like a smooth line because it's kind of, I mean, it's smooth-ish, but it's, it's still, it's a vein, so it's not going to be like perfectly smooth. I'm going to, I'm not sure I really like that. We'll see. We'll try to camouflage a little bit. I'm going to, or soften it, I should say, not camouflage it, but soften it up. I think if I kind of add a little bit of the, obscure that line a little bit, it'll soften it slightly. There we go. I do like to paint birds though. That's, they're really fun to paint. I like painting feathers. That's what we're painting this month in the art taking flight group for the patrons. So it's been fun. All right, so highlight right there on that eyelid. And I looked up, like, I was like, where are the lashes on this horse? Because I don't see any lashes. And I would not, you could not believe, but they actually shave the lashes off of these Arabian horses. They, they shave all but the very, very little bit, like right at the very end. Like, why would you do that? That's the prettiest part of the horse, <laughs> you know? It's so pretty. It's got to be hard for the horse, too, because you kind of need that to protect your eye like it. Uh, I don't know, anyhow. Hmm. But it's a shore horse thing that they do, I guess. I, I looked it up because they had instructions on how to do it Ooh. online. I know. Because I was like, surely that's not right. But yeah, it, they do. So they want to know, would you ever paint the uh, the fountain horse darn alive? I would love that. Let's do it. Sign me up. That's one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done. And actually, I just sold it. We had it in our house for a long time, and I sold it to a friend. And uh, I was kind of regretting it afterwards because I love that painting, so I would like to have another one. Although the one that I sold was, like, <laughs> a lot bigger than the one I'll be able to do for this. So... Sixty by 20 is about as big as I can get in under the camera 
until we get our new studio set up. Hopefully, in our new studio, we'll have a way to uh, turn the camera so we can do easel paintings and do some larger pieces. But for now, we'll just be... And that'll happen sometime this summer, hopefully. I don't know. I'm gonna... Hoping to start soon. Although I'm not looking forward to moving all of our stuff out of here, that's for sure. It's going to be a nightmare. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and go down to the nose area. I've switched to a number two round. Don't think I mentioned that. Um, so right in here, let's go ahead and put the highlight on the top of the nose. And then it comes around here and kind of does the bottom part of the nostril and then this notch right here. It's a highlight right in there. And then there's like little whisker type of things right there on the lip. I'm gonna highlight that lip once more. So you're actually seeing the highlight on the bottom lip and then the crease right here is where you're seeing the shadow. And then there's a shadow coming off the nostril that's sticking out right there. It's raised up and then this should be blended right there so from the top of the nostril whether it's lighter my paints are dry. paints are drying out oh man so this right here go ahead and do it pretty bright right there and then I think I'm just going to glaze over it to darken it up. That way we can just adjust it a little bit easier. I'll just put in that color really bright right there. And then glazing will make it easier to kind of adjust the color to the right value more slowly and carefully. Okay, so then this kind of comes around right there. part of the nose. So on his neck, this is my observation, and somebody asked too. Uh-huh. If the neck seemed a little wide, and I've been looking at it, and does it seem like the neck should be a little bit more of a straight down instead of that? Right here? It, no, to the, on the right, right side, yeah. It, it looks like in the photograph it's a little more like yeah, straight. It's, we can not, bring it. it's not bulging yeah, out. Yeah, we can bring it down. Yeah, you're right, I think. Let's do that.
better? Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. That was a good call. Good, good job on that neck thing. Thanks. Oh, perfect. There you go. What? Oh, you did. I'm okay. serious. Yeah. Much better. Yeah. That's probably what I was not liking about this. Mm -hmm. It was probably this angle that was wrong. Sometimes that happens. Like you kind of get stuck in looking at one part of it, and then you you don't see that. It, you know, it looks it's so obvious once you point that out. I'm like, oh yeah, obviously, it was straight. There's a little bit of a bulge, but it wasn't nearly as much as I had made it. Right. Well, that's what I'm here for. Give you that professional assistance. Thanks, honey. You know how good of an eye I have for artsy things. Right. Hey. I can I can take the, all the help, especially on this when I'm like doing it last minute. I know I haven't had time to check and recheck my angles and stuff like I do, so I appreciate the help for sure. Much better, yeah. Very good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with the face. I like how it's looking for the most part. Um, this highlight here, I can see, kind of comes up and in just a little bit more. And I think that this part of the mouth cuts off right there a little bit more than we did it. it makes this box shape right here. And then I'm popping around the lip. There we go. Really dark in the nostrils, so make sure that you get this area black right here. It's going to be the darkest areas. <sighs> Yay. Okay. Yeah, much better. I feel like I could probably do a little bit more black on the coat, but I'm pretty happy with how it is. I think we can add a little bit more shine to it even. So let's go ahead and do another layer of that zinc white on there. Using that larger number 12 is helping too. Do you think you could get me clean water I on? was just going to ask you if you want me to do that. Yeah, please. I'm going to need it. I appreciate it. Okay, so zinc white here, taking most of it off. And then let's just find those areas where it's supposed to be a little bit. We have got to get that door fixed. They're going to be replacing the doors in the house too, I think, when we get our remodel done. Just to make them a little bit more like farmhousey look. So hopefully they will close better <laughs> too. <laughs> Because these doors, all of them, like, make that noise just about. It's really annoying. Especially when I'm trying to come in and Mark's asleep and I'm coming in, at, you know, late. And he's, I wake him up with that door noise. Right up next to this really light area is this dark shadow right here. So there's like this kind of indention right there. So I want to get that in there. And then it's dark, dark, dark right here again. Shoot, I got a little bit on my white. And then there's a little kind of medium gray right in the middle there. Just slightly. Slightly lighter, not much, but right in here. And I think I've already got that in there, kind of, but.
I didn't wash those. I just rinsed them out. Okay. Thank you. already gone <laughs> okay yeah looking good all right I'm pretty happy Ooh. Let's do this while we snack snack break all right I'm gonna get a lighter color here the inside of the ear is lighter so let's go ahead and put in that light gray there Really hard to talk when I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go ahead and use the grain here. With this color, I'm gonna try to put in some color on the inside of the ears, kind of facing towards the inside. So I'm just tapping, kind of pulling some of that color. A lot of the hairs are coming up with the, over the top of this, so not seeing a whole lot of it, but there is a highlight that this air makes coming down right there. Thanks, hon. That was good. Mm -hmm. Good little snack. Want some more? No, I'm good. I don't want to. I can't talk. Doritos hasn't called us yet, so I'm a little bit mad at them. Okay, pretty happy with it overall, I think. <coughs> turn that fan off it's kind of drying my paints out pretty fast oh sorry I have the remote don't I mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right so I'm gonna kind of add bump up this highlight just a little bit right there wipe my brush off put that paint down and then I'm just gonna Kind of feather out the edges a little bit. And if you don't like it, you can always get your darker color and kind of come up the opposite way. Help obscure that edge a little bit and blend it in somewhat. But again, I'm not overdoing it since I want it to kind of have that painterly look. I'm leaving the brush strokes kind of showing some but I do want to still have kind of a transition between the new color and the you know the color before so man what did you do to the clean water I just got you mm -hmm. that's why we can't have nice things <laughs> cheek here. Grab a little bit of that darker color, blend that end down. Okay. And I mean, honestly think that that's pretty close to where I want it, even though it's a black horse. I'm going to go ahead and glaze it though, just to, just to make sure that it's got a little bit of the darker over the top of that highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the 
white. This is all dry now. And I'm going to use the black and my glazing liquid here. I'm just going to go over the top of that just to tone it black. Just all of these highlights just to tone them down, make sure that they kind of match the rest of the tone of the painting. Now I'm not going to do it on the white part there, but you can see how it kind of softened it. It's still just about as bright, but it's just got that like tone of black um, in there now. Okay. Pretty good. Let's finish the eye here. I'm going to get a little bit of water. More water. I know I don't have any room to put my brushes over here on the side because I've got such a big canvas. They're all crowded next to my palette. First world problems. I know. All right, I'm going to use my angle brush, my quarter inch here. I'm going to get some white. I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of blue. Just the slightest bit. If I can get a little bit. It's not. My paints are starting to dry. So I've already done the highlight on the top there. But I need a little highlight right here on the bottom of the lid. Right there. And then that part right there. In fact, I think I'm going to use my... No, I am going to stick with this brush. Never mind. Sorry. Going back and forth. I'm going to grab the zinc white now. And on the top of the eye, right on top, I'm going to add this zinc white right there. Like a highlight. Just down from the lid line. And there's really not any other detail on this horse. There's not, you're not seeing the eyeball. You're not seeing any detail in it. So um, if you want to add that, you can. Um, we could add just a slight bit of like warmer brown, gray, grayish, you know, warmer brown black, uh, with just a slight bit of the lighter color. If we want to. Maybe do around the center a little bit, like slightly gray there, and then black right in the center. It's really hard to tell where the any detail is though on this picture, so I don't want to try to manufacture something that's not there. So I'm going to get that highlight color again and just put that back over right here. You just stick a googly eye on them if you want to. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be very natural looking. <laughs> okay. I will take that under consideration. There we go. Little highlight there little pop of highlight here and then the lighter I'm gonna go ahead and bring this around just a little bit this comes down to there and then this comes up underneath you can see a little highlight on the lid there tuft your highlight right here just to show the back end of that and I think we're pretty good on the eye and then if you want to add lashes, you can, you know, do that also. They would go, uh, and the people, and they would go right from here down, you know, kind of area. So we could, we could try that, but I don't think they're going to show up much either. So even if they're there, they're probably not going to show up. We could do a little bit over the top of our highlight there though to show them. And then just make sure that this is really dark right under here and really dark kind of wrapping around the side up there. And I think we're good. So. Pretty happy with that. Alright, let's do our hair.
Mm-hmm. And people in chat are glad that you made the veins less creepy. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty creepy on this reference photo. <laughs> well, the reference photo I used, he's like leaping up in midair. So he's like, oh, look what I just did. That's the nose thing coming out. <clears throat> he's got some snot issues. Mm -hmm. Just one splatter right there. <laughs> that was like a perfect splatter. I can't ever make those perfect splatters when I'm trying. So, of course, it would happen when I'm not. Alrighty. I'm trying to think how I want to start this. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and see how it does with the green ear. I don't have a very big one, so it would be helpful if I had a larger green ear brush or a rake comb kind of type of brush, but I don't. So we're just going to have to go with this 3 8 inch one and hope that we can get pretty good lines. I think they make them quite a bit bigger. Actually, I do have, now that I say that, I do have a bigger one in my Princeton Select. Ooh, I have a really big one. Look at that. Three quarter inch. Ooh, I'm going to use that. These are the Princeton Select brushes that I'm going to have to keep it looking nice though because I got to <laughs> use it for a video. So don't let me leave it in the water and ruin it. These are the ones that we uh, we got from Princeton Select or, or Princeton. We're going to be doing videos for their website. So we already started on them, but that's the $10 group on Patreon. They're going to see the behind the scenes filming of all of these brush videos. We're showing how to do, how to use 29 different brushes. So it's going to be really cool. All right, I'm going to set this down using thin paint. That's These brushes do, do, just do not work really well when you're using thicker paints. So um, just keep that in mind when you're doing this. I'm going to come down here and come down over the top of the forehead. And there's really not, like, it looks like he's, it's kind of parted because he's jumping. So I'm just going to manufacture, like, a lock that's coming down this way and over this way. Okay, so we need to have a naming contest. For this horse? Mm -hmm. I like it. Let's do it. So go chat. Go chat. Yeah, nobody's really responded to mine, so... It's what was yours? H low. What? H low. I'm not sure what that means. Mm -hmm. There's a certain pop singer that likes to always have their hair blowing. Got it. So it's like H for horse? Yeah. Got it. Best I could come up with is it is a little. It's cheesy. Yeah. It's cheesy, hun. It is. I'm not even laughing at it. <laughs> I don't... I think I, I need to bring this up just a little bit. It's like... He looks like he has weird bangs right now. He's got a comb over. He does have a comb over. It's, it's like awkward. None of his friends want to talk about it. They're all trying to be nice, but they're all thinking it. Like Chad. I think his name is Chad. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. But no, no offense to anybody out there named, named Chad. Chad. But this, I think this is a Chad haircut right here. <laughs> so oh, not, you're going to get so much hate good. mail. I know. Oh, why did I say that? I, uh, I, sometimes I say things and I'm like, oh, dang it. I what? wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> so I'm now going to hear it. I'm going to hear it from all the Chads. Sorry. My husband's named Chad, and he's, that's, sorry guys, <laughs> just joking. It's a very a powerful stallion, is what you're painting here, and his name just happens to be Chad. <laughs> is that helping any? Maybe, I Maybe. don't know. Okay. So down here, this is going to be pretty solid, the area down low. So 
something about the bangs. I'm going to have to work on that. I think it's because they're so short. They just need to be longer. I just haven't committed and made them really long. Bangs have not been in style for a while. Or are they coming back? I don't know. I'm not doing a very good job on this hair on the front. I tried to make it up, and I'm not. I'm not it's not working for me very well. But, oh, well, we'll figure it out. I mean, these horses, they're... Yeah, their bangs were coming down pretty low. It's got some bangs coming down this way. Well, not bangs, but mane. It'll look better once we get the rest of it in, I think. Okay, so it kind of ends right about here. This is the last little bit of it, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of start there. And See how we're doing? I'm kind of start out, and I'm just letting those very light touch, just letting the very tips of the brush, not much pressure, and always ending at the end of the brush stroke, not out, not trying to start the brush stroke and pull it in because it's going to be thinnest when you lift off the canvas. So. What's the chat so, saying for names? So first, what's the brush size again? This is a three-quarter inch. Select. Do, um, for instance, select. Okay, so we got a Black Magic. Ooh. Like it. Chad Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Diablo. Ooh, Diablo. I like that. Francisco. Francisco. Oh, that's fun to say. Oh. <laughs> Ace. Ace. Uh, nice. Canoe. Canoe. Or is that how you say that? The the uh, Matrix guy? Keanu. Keanu. Okay. Keanu. Oh, I like it. Gunpowder. Oreo. Oh, Oreo. That's cute. Tank. Or Hank. Hank, <laughs> that's great. Uh, let's see here. We have Lava. Peppercorn. Y'all are creative. Man, these are good names. Studly. I ask you next time we need to name our dog. Midnight. If we get a new dog ever. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, alfalfa. Nice. Yeah, that's appropriate. Uh, He's in zinc white here in the hair too, just to kind of add some highlights in a few places. That Chad Noir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the winner. <laughs> oh, ding ding ding! <laughs> Good, put on the lights. We need it. <laughs> we need some lights for that one. That's awesome, Chad Noir. <laughs> Okay, what do they win, Johnny? <laughs> 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 Chad Noir. That is awesome. Who who said that? That's Jillian. Jillian. Yeah. <laughs> good good one, Jillian. That's great. We okay, have, but I, I like the bangs better now that we got more of this mane going on, and I think we can even bring it out even more. I kind of started conservative because I didn't want to overpower it, but... It goes out pretty far here, so I'm going to keep on going here. We also had Howitzer, Napoleon, Stryker, uh, Tempest. Ooh, Tempest. Blackjack. And 
uh, Sassy Wild. That's great. That might be a stage name. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That's his. That's when he's on the show circuit. Yeah, that's his arena name. Yeah, (laughs) Sassy Wild. Here comes Sassy Wild. He's wearing a lovely (laughs) harness of golden green. Oh, boy. That's awesome. It is Pride Month, so, you know. It is. It's appropriate. It's Chad Noir, though. That That's it. That was great. Okay, so... I just want to make sure it kind of makes this right arc. It kind of follows the line of the head. So I can bring some of these up a little bit. And I'm doing them in like small clumps so you can see kind of like that they're um, separating together. You know, so these ones are kind of separating here. These ones are coming up, and then some of them are breaking off this way, and some of them are breaking upward. But I'm trying to keep them all kind of going in that same flow. <clears throat> well, it's looking good. Somebody asked, were you changing colors on the brush? I was. I was adding a little bit of zinc white there for a little bit. I haven't added it in a while. I'm probably going to go back in and do a little bit more because it's just a little bit like right in there. You can see where that little white tips were. So I was just adding a little bit of highlight where it got too solid, you know, like I couldn't see any movement. So because this is so dark, if you need to kind of help that movement along, you can add little bits of like lighter gray just where it may be catching the light or something. And like, especially up here on the bangs, on the chest bangs. Okay. Pretty happy with it. Go ahead and bring some of this hair down lower. Come down this way. He's cute. All right, so I don't know if we can see them side by side. We can try. Whoa. (laughs) There we go. We can at least see both of those. (laughs) I think they work. It's kind of cool. I think he's a little bit maybe more smooth. I think I blended a little bit more than I did on this original, but I think that they'll work together. They'll get along. So... be a love triangle going on we may need to have a do a third one just to have an even number of couples well you have an odd number of horses so that's true so it's good to do odd numbers and art i'm just saying you know if those two are like in love this guy's coming in he's the like rival stud Right, so just going back in here and uh, bumping up a little bit of the shadows, but I really think that that's nice and dark. We've got the it light enough so you can see the features, but it's not looking white. Like that's the that's the fine line that we've got, you know, with doing these black any anything black animals um, is just kind of getting it to where it looks. It still looks black, but it's got some form. It can be really tricky. Uh, I'm going to do one more layer of white on this neck here where I can still see the previous layer. And we'll be done. It 
may take you two or three coats, so don't worry about it if that happens to you and you have to cover something up. Pretty normal, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's not too bad, two hours. You got him done pretty good, pretty quickly. I'm happy with it. I hope you guys try it and uh, share it with me on my social media. I've got all kinds of groups and things down there. Links down in the description for where you can share. And uh, let me see. Oh, you're going to do that. I'm going to add just a little bit more highlight right here on the nose. Just pump that up just a little bit more. And let's sign it. And what brush was I using the other day that I decided it worked really good to sign it? I think it was this one. Yes, this one. Two aught brush there. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. So our super chat today was from Laura. And she said, thank you, Angela and Mark. Awesome team. Aw. Oh, thanks, Thank you, Laura. Laura. We really appreciate the support. We really do. And we've got some schedule changes. Uh, I'm not sure if the email went out, but if you want to be part of our email list, you can go to my website. It's thankfulart.com. And um, get on our email list, and we'll send you notifications of changes to our schedule, new videos, all that kind of good stuff, and uh, things we've got going on coming up. I'm going to sign. And I need to think. I can't talk while I'm signing because mm -hmm. I tend to write my name twice. Angela, Angela, Angela. <laughs> but, um, oh, so yeah, we're going to we be looking for um, the posts. We had to move Tuesday's video, so we will not be doing a Tuesday video um, this tomorrow this week so uh mark's going to california yep on us last minute trip work so mm -hmm. i'm trying to get this to where it doesn't have a shine on it <laughs> it's hard it's to okay. find a spot um but yeah so we'll we won't be um tuesday but we will be back next saturday for two videos we're gonna have a back-to-back -back saturday and sunday videos the sunday video will be our bonus video we're doing a waterfall and saturday video will be the landscape with the flowers i think right yeah i think so sunset landscape with flowers um uh and what else Oh, so if you want to sign up for the Patreon video, um, you can do that at patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Also find the traceable. For the $5 level, you get both the traceable and a reference photo that you get the high-resolution finished painting, high-resolution um, reference photo that I used, and then also uh, the links to the bonus videos that you can attend. And you can watch any of the old bonus videos as well um, on that level. So, And then if you want to be part of the $10 group and see what we're painting there. I'll show you what we're working on. We're kind of one more week of this one. It's a uh, it's work in progress, so don't <laughs> judge it yet. <laughs> it's still got a lot of work to go, but we're working on this lilac breasted roller, and uh, we'll be finishing that next week, and then or this week coming up, and then we'll be working on those Princeton brush videos um, from the from the rest of the month. So. Oh oh yes 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 okay so we've got some goodies here that we wanted to show. So Karen sent us the uh, a, the stick man for Mark out of her. She does uh, jewelry and things with beads. And so she sent him a, like a card. We're going to have to fuzz and out that, that picture so you don't get more hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, that's we'll, going, that's hanging up. So we're going to. We'll blur it out. Hang out, hang out. Thank you, Karen. Oh, and this is awesome. I am so excited about this one. This is from Tess Walker. And what if you don't what? know what this is, this is the <clears throat> cap to help you open the golden paints. I haven't used it yet, so I'll have to figure out how it works. But they have different I think I ones for different I think sizes. Just, yep. So it's supposed to help you get the caps off the golden paints. Oh yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Tess. This is awesome. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. So really excited to be having those. And then we've got from Donna Miller Brown sent us two. Florida magnets. Really cool. Thank you, Donna. And the sweet card along with it. And then Sandy Perez from Manchester, England. She sent us a couple of magnets. That one says Manchester, so it's all kinds of cool stuff. I hope we get to visit someday. It looks really mm -hmm. awesome. So thank you to Sandy Perez and um, Donna Miller-Brown, Tess Walker, and Karen Parsich. 
Ooh. for Karen Lee um, for sending us all those goodies. Really appreciate it. We're going to put those up on Mark's goodie wall. He's got his magnet, wall. magnet wall there, and it's pretty much full. Hashtag magnets for Mark. Magnets for Mark. It's got a little bit of room up. off the side there, but it's not much room. So you guys have done good to help us cover it and i will be sending out the thank you yes. gifts this Th- week i promise thank i'm working on them tomorrow it's been hectic here it has been super hectic this week but i am going to do it tomorrow so we are going to be sending out the thank you magnets and little stickers and things to everybody that sent us goodies tomorrow so be looking for those in the mail next week all right guys thank you so much for watching as usual and we will see you next time bye <laughs>